I'm Elisa and I am the scrappy wife behind scrappywife.com and today I have an art journaling process video for you. I am going to try doing a vertical layout in my art journal. This is the one I've been working on all year and it's getting pretty full. I'm not sure if I'll finish it by the end of the year but we'll see. I still have quite a few layouts back here but I've never tried a vertical spread so I'm planning on doing one right here. I would like to use this beautiful vintage girl cut out from a calendar. I have some distress sprays. I'm kind of wanting to do a fall foliage feel. So we'll see how that turns out. And I'm just going to have fun with it. So I will put you all on fast forward and we'll see what happens. Let's go. I have a box from my Felicity Jane subscription that works perfectly for sprays. When you're using these sprays, they do tend to get everywhere. So I like having the box to kind of contain it. That way my work surface doesn't get so dirty. The colors I am using are Vintage Photo, and then you'll see me grabbing the Carved Pumpkin. I use a little bit of Picked Raspberry, squeezed Lemonade, and then right at the end you'll see some Victorian Velvet coming in. I love these sprays. Now it looks super vibrant now. As they dry though, it gets kind of a chalky look to it. It doesn't feel chalky, but it'll kind of get that look to it. Right now I'm adding in a little bit of yellow, that's the squeeze lemonade, and then I actually unscrew the top and just plop some on, just for a different pattern kind of look, and I'm going to do the same thing with the Victorian Velvet. I'm going for texture and interest and color mixing. The last spray you see me grab is actually a Dilution Shimmer Spray, and those are super fun to mix in because they obviously don't dry chalky they dry with that shimmer and so it creates a cool pattern when those two sprays mix together so here you can see how much the color has changed now that it has dried and I'm just checking how my girl fits in with the rest of the colors and because it's mostly chalky I want to add just some more interest and depth to the background I'm taking the peeled paint color here at the top and I saturated the top a lot and I am going to take some water this is a really thick water brush from Arteza I'm dropping water down and letting it just drip down the page it is a super fun effect when you're playing with these sprays you just really have to go for it you can't control what's gonna happen because you can't control the direction of the sprays at all times but that's the point of a mixed media background is that it kind of lets the supplies do what they want and I think that creates for an interesting unpredictable background and then you can control what's going to go on top of it. Whenever I have bits that have become too saturated I usually just take a paper towel and very gently soak up some of that liquid. You see me coming in with my heat tool to kind of dry it up there and I'm going to continue adding more and more layers. I'm loving how the top is looking and you'll see later in the close-ups there are some very cool swirling patterns going on with those um, with those greens and the pinks at the top. Here I'm just using water. This is just straight up water that I'm adding to create the oxidation effect with those Distress Oxide sprays. And then I'm going to come in with my favorite watercolor set. This is a set of metallic watercolors. I'm going to use the copper and add some more copper splatters. And this will kind of bring out the shimmer spray a little bit more. And it'll add some different texture and different finish on the top. So you'll have the chalky versus the shimmer. I'll continue layering with sprays and this time I'm going to use a stencil. This is Pixie Spray which I spray on the back of all my stencils before I use so that they stay in place. On this one in particular I get really close with the spray and because of how the book is positioned I didn't get a good seal but that's okay because it is a mixed media project and it's not a big deal to have it be a little bit more messy looking. I come dry it just a little and then peel up and you'll see that some of the spray did leak underneath. I'm not too worried about it. I still kind of like the impression that it left beneath. 
and I will add a little bit more in here with a different stencil. Here I'm coming in with a different music stencil and I'm using the Distressed Oxide ink. I believe that's Weathered Wood or Hickory Smoke. I'll link it below, whichever one it is. And I'm coming in with my blending tool because I want to be a little bit more specific about where I have the stencil. I chose a gray color because I do want it in the background. I didn't want black to kind of pop off because I'm going to use black in a different way. But I like that the gray blends in yet is still defined with this stencil so that you can see the music going on. planning on doing some stamping with embossing. So this is my embossing powder that I'm covering the whole layout with and truthfully I should have just walked away and let my layout dry out a little bit more. I used a lot of sprays so the page was pretty saturated. It's dried to the touch but not dry through and through and I thought my powder would kind of soak that up and prevent the embossing powder from hitting other parts of the page. It did not. And that's okay because it really didn't affect the overall look, but just for future reference, if you are trying this, really make sure your page is fully dried out. I'm using a fall leaf set called Autumn Leaves from By the Well for God and some clear embossing powder. I'm stamping with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink and you'll see I stamp a couple leaves at a time and then I will cover them with the embossing powder just so that the ink doesn't dry out and so that it's still sticky and then I will move on and do a couple more cover them until I'm pretty pleased with the whole layout and after that I take all the excess powder off and then I will begin the embossing process. where I take all the excess embossing powder and sweep it into the box below. This doesn't go to waste. You can take all of this embossing powder and funnel it back into the container. Embossing powder for me lasts a really long time. I don't use it a whole lot and so I'll be able to save that later. I was showing you an up close you can see that all of those black leaves have kind of faded because they're covered with the embossing powder. And I'll use my heat tool. I'll link it below. It's from Ranger. And it takes a little while to heat up this embossing powder, but it is the coolest thing. It's maybe one of the most satisfying things to watch embossing powder melt. I'm showing you, try to showing you an up close picture right here. And you can see how the leaves just pop off. And I could have just left them in black ink, but I wanted them to have the shine to them, which is why I use that clear embossing powder to kind of make them pop off the page even more. Now that all of the embossing powder has melted and is set, I'm going to start on the next technique. And this is going to sound a little bit random, but when I was in high school, we didn't have text messages. So when you wanted to send a message to your friend, we literally wrote paper notes to each other. And we had this technique that we used to kind of make a tie dye looking background on your note. And it was the scribble technique where you just scribbled circles and then you change colors and scribbled a bigger circle and then change colors and scribbled a bigger circle until the circles ran into each other. And it made a very cool looking effect. And I am going to do something similar to that on this layout. What I'm doing is I'm taking some paint pens. I have a white paint pen and then I have a couple of Jane Davenport glitter markers that are paint pens that work really nicely but have still a translucent feel and then I have a gold paint pen from Target and I am going to layer those around each of these fall leaves and that way the image of the fall leaf will continue to get bigger and bigger and they'll eventually run into each other. It kind of creates a tie-dye feel which I think goes really well with my simplicity gal that I'm planning on putting on this page and it's just an interesting technique and layering idea because you'll still be able to see the background somewhat because all of these paint pens 
are drying slightly translucent, but it does add another layer. You see, I put it in time lapse here as I speed up, and I, I just really like the effect. And for me, it was a little bit nostalgic remembering spending all of this time writing notes to friends and creating very similar ideas in high school. And I like the idea of it coming full circle and using that same technique as an adult person that still loves creativity. All right, now that my background is done, I have my Simplicity Girl over to the right there. And I'm gonna spell out the title of this page, which is gonna be Forward, which is a word that I've just been having in my head a lot and I wanted to put it down on paper. I'm trying to see if I can fit it vertically on the paper and I just don't think it's gonna work out. So what I end up doing is putting it over here on the left, kind of floating over on the lower left-hand side, and I'll stamp it again in that VersaFine Onyx Black ink. It gives a great impression. I love these stamps from Tim Holtz, these alpha stamps that are this foam. They work so well in my art journaling, and I have all of Tim Holtz's foam alphas because I think they're just the perfect size and I just love the impression that they give. I do end the word forward with a period because I like the concept of that there's no other choice but to move forward in your life, in your goals, in whatever you're doing. You can't spend time looking back like this lady is. She is looking back but her body is moving forward. So you see I cut her in half to fit her over the crease in the page right there and it works out pretty well. Working in the vertical layout was a little bit more challenging. For me, the horizontal line in the middle was more visible to me than when I have a vertical line turned the other way, which I thought was interesting. I'm not sure why it felt more like a barrier to me. It might be because it's the back of the art journal and the art journal is getting pretty thick, but it just, it was, it was interesting. So I am putting down a quote from Amelia Earhart and it says the most difficult thing is to decide to start. The rest is just tenacity. And I love that idea because sometimes it is hard to start something, but once you're starting your body in motion, moving in motion, and you just keep going forwards. After I finished the quote, I was looking at the leaves and I really felt like it looked like they were blowing. And so I wanted to add some wind marks and I also wanted to connect the forward to my woman on the right and I felt that the wind marks kind of drew your eye that way. I wanted to add one more quote, embrace the winds of change up here to fill in this little spot and then once I did that I kind of felt like you couldn't see the words very well. So what I'm going to do is grab my Tim Holtz small chat over here or small talk and add some quotes around the embrace the winds of change to kind of draw your eye up there. I could put quotes all over every art journal page and I would never get tired of it. My last step is I wanted my winds of change to feel a little bit more magical. And so I'm covering my black lines with some liquid blue and I'm going to add some gold shard glitter. And this is the coolest glitter. I bought it this summer. It's called glass glitter and it's from Art Anthology and it has different shapes and different sizes of gold in there and it creates just the most interesting look. So I'm putting it on the page. I'll wipe off the excess and then this page will be done. I would be so interested to know what some of your favorite mixed media supplies are. The sprays are really calling my name these days and I am just loving using them. So let me know below what are you into these days. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button. It really means a lot to me when you take the time to hit that thumbs up. I hope you have a fantastic day and as always, keep it creative.